Love and Watches is a podcast for male and female watch lovers alike. Perpetual Girl and Ranch Racer are a watch-crazy wife and husband team, bringing you the latest in news, gossip, controversy, and anything else that matters in the world of watches. We hope you enjoy the show. Hey, watch peeps. Welcome to another episode of the Love and Watches podcast. I am Ranch Racer. And I'm Perpetual Girl. Good morning. And we are today we are recording episode 24. 24 episodes, almost to that mm-hmm. magical 25. Well, is, mag- is 25 magical? I don't know. They're all magical. They are. They are all magical, <laughs> right? <laughs> the magic. The magic happens right here in the Love and Watches podcast craft room. studios. <laughs> <laughs> right here in the craft room. Right here in the craft room, yeah. Uh, so yeah, welcome to the show, everyone. Uh, excited, as always, to be coming to you guys from the craft room. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, today we're going to talk about a few different things. Um, probably it's, the the main topic is is moon phase, right? Which yeah, we're. I'm kind of still stuck on the. Um, I'm in the moon phase, honeymoon. You're still. in the moon phase phase, um, and uh, so we're actually going to. Perpetual girl did a bunch of homework and is going to talk about the moon phase complication and where it came from and how it works and and all that fun stuff. And and then we've got kind of some other random topics we'll probably start with before we get into moon phase. Um, we also have some exciting announcements to make today, which we'll, we'll do probably, that first. Yeah, we'll do, uh, well, we'll do the wrist checks and then we'll, we'll jump into the announcements. Um, so yeah, some, some fun stuff. Hope you guys enjoy the show today. So it's, uh, it's really nasty and rainy here in Northern California as it's been all winter. So we're, we're huddled up with our coffee and the, and- achy and <laughs> yeah <laughs> the old bones trying to, are creaking <laughs> trying to just push through like a show pony that's right you got to push through man our, our listeners expect it so and, and we know some of you have been pinging us where's the next episode so we're we're bringing it to you today so uh and this will actually probably post today so there won't be a delay um but anyway so why don't we start with the wrist checks and pg i'm gonna let you uh sure kick it off i I actually wore this for the last podcast, so I already have talked about it, but I had been looking for a moon phase for a long time. And when we went to Las Vegas, uh, I ended up buying this Frederic Constant uh, slimline moon phase. It's got uh, two sub dials with the date on the left and the moon phase on the right. And it's stainless steel with a black sort of croc patterned um, band, formal looking. Deployant I'm, clasp, right? Yeah, really yeah. nice deployant, like a single deployant with an um, uh, ornate buckle. It's really nice. It's, it's like pretty. a skeletonized mm-hmm. uh, with their clasp. Logo. It's really it's nice. It's got their little logo yeah. in it. I'm still looking for a bracelet for this. So I found a few cheapies online I'm going to try. But um, still waiting to hear back from our AD on this one to see if yeah. some of the other. This, this brand actually has quite a few moon phase watches. And they've got some new ones. I believe they were for 2018. Mm-hmm. The slim line with the starry sky, yep. uh, diamond encrusted bezel for the fancy. If you want something more fancy, um, but it was bigger. That was which was I found kind of odd. It was a larger case size. The, the silver one was bigger. I th- I'm not the sure one with about the diamonds. The, right? It was larger yeah, than the yours. silver one that I tried on was yeah. bigger. But the 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 starry sky one. Oh, all blue. All the right. the blue with a rose pink gotcha. bezel gotcha. and diamonds and the black face with the yeah. stainless and diamonds. They are stunning. Just stunning watches. And at the higher end, at about four thousand, I think. Yeah, it was for pretty, them. So you do expensive. pay quite a bit for the bling. Yeah. Which we all know is not really my thing. But um but it lately was you've gorgeous. been enjoying it a little bit more. I've been enjoying more certain... feminine and smaller stuff lately, which is kind of interesting. Well, and I don't think it's that you don't like the bling, but it's a couple things. Number one, we don't ever go anywhere where you'd really be able to wear a where super dressy diamond-like watch. Yeah, yeah. Number two, they're expensive. Number three, what we really don't like, and we've talked about before, is when manufacturers take a given design that's, say, you know, mechanical for men and slap a bunch of jewels on it and achieve quartz movement and charge a ton of money that's what we don't like but right this um, did have the same fc 70 
whatever movement in it though the in-house movement oh, yeah, all yeah. the the moon, the moon phase yep. but they do have a lot of really beautiful ladies watches however most of them have the if you get anything below a 38 or so they're all quartz so right. which isn't always a bad thing we we have always nothing, said as long but, as it's priced appropriately there's nothing wrong with that yeah it's what it's if you like looking at it buy it exactly so one of our listeners reached out to me and was asking me about gold plated watches and and uh you know recommendations and he asked me about a specific watch from i think it was from from citizen and i'm like hey man citizen's great if you like it go for it and don't worry about what other people think because mm-hmm. it doesn't matter right kaz wrote an article that you might talk about a little bit today on invicta and it's like who cares don't don't go with the lemmings right don't go with the masses that, that don't know what they're talking about so it's about your own personal happiness and i, I read almost yep. i'm about 75 percent through no more like 90 percent through with the story so i haven't finished that but yeah. um so far i really article. like it kaz yeah and big shout out to kaz at two rogue watch knobs for that because like i wrote a an article on an invicta for wristwatch review last year it oh was your the mickey Disney, yeah the mickey and you know i caught some flack from that from some people and you know most of these people have never even had an invicta in their hand they just they go along with the hate crowd you know and it's ridiculous but anyway total tangent so, I want to stay on topic because I don't want to, I don't want to confuse people. Let's stay on topic. <clears throat> okay. So I'm still wearing the moon phase and really like it. Um, I, I got an email. We got an email. It was a DM, a direct message from a person who knew that I was looking for a moon phase, which was really sweet and recommended. So that was listener, um, something. Scott Sardo. So mm-hmm. Scott, thank you. We appreciate you reaching out. Um, it was for, a drop on mass drop for the glycine combat classic moon phase in, um, it was 36 or 37 well there was millimeter? a i went back and looked at the drop there's a 40 there was a 40 millimeter but it looked like they also had a 36 millimeter offering but i don't know if it was the same movement see, i didn't see that i thought it was a quartz yeah for the but 36. but you had already purchased your fc right. I think it was already Scott on the way us either when we were in vegas or when we right after we got home mm-hmm. um but that leads perfectly into my wrist check because that's what I'm wearing. Because I've, you got jealous. I got jealous that you had a moon phase. <laughs> <laughs> I had to have my own moon phase. So it's actually not, that's not 100% accurate. Um, you know, I've looked yeah, at... it is. No, it's not. I've looked at, in, at glycine over the last several years. You have, and at Frederic Constant. Yeah, and so this was one of the few glycines that I had considered buying over the years and just never did. It, you know, it, it's, I think the retail is like 1200 on it. Um, you didn't pay that for it, though. No, traditionally it's had a an ETA movement, but now that um, can I see it? Now that Invicta owns Glycine, uh, they don't get ETA movement, so I believe it's got the Salida Moon Phase movement, which is totally oh. cool with me. It's got a nice exhibition back on it. Yeah, and uh, so anyway, so I pulled the trigger on that one. I bought the blue dial with. Um, they had already, unfortunately, they had already sold out of the blue dial with the bracelet, which is really what I wanted. So I got the blue dial with the black leather strap, which I didn't really care for. So I've right now got it on one of my Detroit Watch Company thick brown leather straps. Those are nice. With an nice awesome straps. double deployant clasp. I love those straps. They're one of the few leather straps I actually like, and it just looks perfect with that dial. There's a lot of nice loom on this watch, too. The hands and the indices. It's and fully loomed. It doesn't last long, but it is fully loomed. Looks like the moon itself is silver. The moon is silver, very basic. There's and some stars. stars. It's yeah, cute. On a it's blue a beautiful. Background. I really like it a lot. It's a really nice watch. Really um, like it. It's not real busy. I know there's been some folks not real happy with some of the changes that Invicta is making to the glycine, specifically on the dial. Like they've changed the logo to look a lot more like the wing logo on the Invictas, which kind of looks like Breitling anyway. So, well, you know, I, I think I preferred the old logo, but honestly, I don't care because I don't get too hung up in the little tiny details like that like some folks do um on some of their watches they're doing more text now on the dial this one all it has is the word automatic under Mm -hmm. the moon phase and then the word glycine under the logo at 12 so there's nothing on the case though which is nice because some of the invicta oh yeah they're not pro and grand divers have that humongous engraved like the the centimeter wide yeah which is really overkill because it's already on the these are still classic glycine cases it's it's just little details that they're messing it's a, with it's a pretty watch it's um, really pretty some people will like it some people won't but i for me it doesn't 
it, it's just not that big of an issue. Um, nor is nor is moving from the Eta to the Salida an issue. They're both great movements, so I don't have any problem with that. But yeah, so I'm really enjoying this. So um, big shout out to Scott Sardo for pointing us to the mm-hmm. mass drop. But Scott, I'm also really upset with you because you cost me another 350 bucks because I was not watch shopping and really been trying to be good in 2019 and bought one almost immediately into the new year with the Trasca and you then can't bought be this. Good. So you can't be good. clearly I can't be good. <laughs> and our listeners are not helping me. They're bad influences on me, but uh, anyway, so that's what that's I'm wearing. That's a price performer though. That's a really nice. For 350 bucks. I mean, I mean, not that I don't love my awesome. Frederic Constant. It's a gorgeous watch. Great. And you know, addition to my collection, but that glycine is really kind of wish you, I would have found out about that before. I, I defy anyone to find a mechanical, a Swiss mechanical moon phase for this kind of money. Three hundred fifty bucks. Yeah. You're just there's not a silver one it. too, isn't there? There was silver and black dial, or white and black dials. I think blue dial is gonna almost always be the most popular, and that's what I like for men. But, yeah. I think men are, and it's a beautiful blue. It's kind of a sunburst, just a really nice, beautiful reflection in the in the light. Mm-hmm. So. I've been loving this. I've been wearing it the heck out of it. Yeah. Um, and you do got to, if you don't want to have to reset that moon phase, you got to make sure you give it a few wines every day. Or if you're keep, not it, on it. Winder, or keep I, it on a winder, which I keep on a which might, we'll probably do. Might be putting mine on one just because I got, it took, you know, I had to wait till the full moon to actually get it set exact because I wanted it perfect. Well, and if you know when, so what you told me, your advice was great is you told me when, what day the full moon was. Mm-hmm. So I set it to that day. Uh, which had been several days prior to when the day that I was setting it, set it to full moon and then just pulled it out and advanced it, you know, a few days manually and the moon is, is correct. So, Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so I'm loving it. It's a really fun watch. And of course we're both wearing moon phases today, which is, uh, perfect for the topic at hand. So I have a quick housekeeping question though. Do I need to, are we having trouble with our internet from the storm? Do I need to make sure that we're hooked up to something? You know, we don't have a guest coming in over over um skype so if we okay. do drop we can always just like the lights are flickering right now yeah that we may have a power outage well if we have a power outage <laughs> we got a problem you'll get to witness it <laughs> because our we'll gear know. will shut down it'll shut the generator will come on but but we'll there's be... a delay so yeah. yeah we'll well we'll just push through like a show pony that's right um all right so should we move into news we got some fun stuff to talk about on yeah the news front we um, can do it um in the order that we have it on our notes okay so uh Let's jump into it. So the first thing that we're very excited to announce, we've been talking a lot about the contest for the regrams, our first, uh, our inaugural Love and Watches regram giveaway. Uh, we selected a winner. The winner's been notified. He's super excited. Uh, and so we are announcing that winner today. And it's uh, one of our listeners, Matt Wright, ESQ, underscore ESQ. So huge congratulations to Matt. Matt uh, is getting... A signed copy of the 100 plus no BS watch tips from Anthony, who's the no BS watchmaker who we've had on the show. Uh, he's also getting uh, a strap and some extra spring bars and the strap changing tool from Terry at Toxic Natives, who we've also had on the show. So huge thank you to Anthony and Terry for contributing those uh, those prizes for this giveaway. And uh, we were, and this was really fun. It was fun to well, do. And they were really excited about uh, offering the giveaway. So it's just been fun for everybody. Yep. And that's why we do it, right? That's why yeah. We're here. And you know what? All Matt had to do was tag us, or or and or use the Love and Watches hashtag, and he automatically got entered. We don't, you know, some weeks though there might be three grams regrams. Other weeks I may not do a regram because there's just nothing that pops out, or we haven't had people tagging us. So your chances are really good on these, and we're probably going to do them every six months. So first half of the year, second half of the year. So um, the odds were the best in this one, but. It's going to be really good, you know, good odds. So make sure you're tagging us and and using that Love and Watches hashtag on every post that you guys do. It doesn't make sense not to because you're going to get entered for a giveaway and we'll always have some fun stuff. So definitely do that. And big, big congrats to Matt. Good job, man. We, oh, Keep and those we also awesome photos coming. We did a really special way of doing the drawing too. So we'll put that out on uh, Instagram. <laughs> It'll be a surprise. We did. I guess we should post that on Instagram, huh? It's cute. Yeah. Very cute. Okay. We'll do that. Uh, so that's that. 
the next announcement. Um, oh, this one is really cool. So Machek, who is the head of Red Bar Sacramento, he was our first. And our good friend. First guest mm-hmm. on the show. Great friend. Actually, I spent some time this weekend with Machek and his son. We went to the, the go-kart Very racing track, which nice was a lot of fun. family. Yeah. Yeah. Great family. Uh, Machek pulled off a coup. I don't know how he did this, but um, he got Oris to agree to um, do one of our get togethers. Super, super exciting. Um, so Oris is going to be coming on April 9th to the next Red Bar Sack or to that Red Bar Sack uh, meetup in April. It's going to be April 9th at 7 30 at Sienna Restaurant in Roseville, California. So any, any of you guys in Northern California or who work here or like come up for meetings or yeah, if you're in the area, even if you're down in the San Francisco Bay area and you've never had a chance to go to an Oris event. Or Come a Red Bar event. I don't think there is a Red Bar San Francisco. No, there's Watch Bay Meetups, which does their events with Topper, but they're not a Red Bar. Okay. Um, so yeah, definitely, uh, we would love to have you guys. So if you do want to come, please um, send a direct message to Red Bar Sac um, on Instagram and let let Machek know that you plan on attending. We need to try to get some numbers because... You know, depending on how many people decide to show, they may need to move us around to bigger room or whatever. But uh, let them know if you're not on Instagram, you can just email us at admin at love and watches and let us know you're coming and I'll, we'll, we can pass that on to uh, to Machek. So I'm looking forward to that. That's going to be fun. Red Bar is going to be bringing a lot of their newest offerings out to to check out and try Oris. on. Oris. I'm sorry. Oris. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so they were very nice to talk to. We got to, to see them at Couture last year in Las Vegas, yep. and we talked to a, a woman who was representing their brand and got to see some of the smaller offerings too, which aren't very small. They're what 39, yeah. 38? Yeah, they got 36 too. They got some 36s. Um, so yeah, they're really pretty. They're offering smaller, smaller watches for folks, but still in the sporty and or classic designs. So uh, and they're they're friends of Red Bar, right? They had the special edition Red Bar watch that was announced at Couture last year, mm-hmm. with the red dial that that Machek actually owns. Um, so yeah, definitely, if you guys want to come out and have some fun with Oris, uh, let us know. You we, think they'll bring the bear? You. I, that's a good the question. I don't know if Oris Bear is going to be there or not. They I have don't a know. Giant bear yeah they have a, a the oris bear so i don't know if he's going to be there but um either way there's going to be some awesome watches there so definitely come join us so that's that and then you had an announcement if you wanted to talk about that well it's not so much my announcement but i was just going to talk generally about um the buzz on instagram about what are we going to see at basil did you want to mention the alpinist i do Okay. So um, we're already starting to see new watches being released. And one that we just saw is Seiko's uh, anniversary limited edition Alpinist. Yeah. And that's a special collaboration with Hodinkee. So it's only available through Hodinkee uh, on their shop. And there's a specific number of them. And um, 1,959. Yeah. And the color of the dial is blue. Uh, I thought it was going to be green. But it's blue. And I think that's because men like blue. Yeah. You know, and I, I'm one of those guys. I like blue. But Women I, like blue too. But I think blue, don't you yeah, think? I, is I a... think I think personally for the Alpinist, I think it was the wrong move. I'm just going to say it. There's probably going to be people that are going to hate me for saying that. But if it had been something along the lines of the gorgeous emerald green of or the, the original creamy, or the creamy, yeah. you know, that cream dial, I probably would have seriously considered buying it. I think it's going to be 1200 no, $600. Wow. They're only making 1,959 of them because the Alpinist was released in 1959. But yeah, I just me personally, it's a little, I don't know, just a little bit it, dull. I, it, it doesn't just, represent what the piece is to me. Like when I, when I think Alpinist, I think of those those dials, right? Mm-hmm. That, that green or the cream, or I just don't think blue. And to me, it is, just doesn't is, fit the, aesthetic. it was a more, the Alpinist was a little more dressy. The blue makes it, I think it's a matte blue. I'd have to go back and look, but it, it's a little bit more tool watch. Well, an Alpinist is Alpine and Alpine is trees and green. Yeah. 
I don't know. I, this is my personal opinion. Is no, blue the nothing color against... for that Hodinkee? Yeah, it's nothing against. Nothing against Hodinkee. I right. mean, they, you know, they're they've got their thing going. They sell watches, whatever, and they do their special collabs. I, it's just not for me. I was I was kind of disappointed to see the blue dial, and I know a lot of people are going to love it. They're going to be like, "Yeah, we can get an Alpinist mm-hmm. in blue," but it just doesn't say Alpinist to me. Is blue the signature Hodinkee color? I don't think so. I don't think they have a signature color. Because that could explain it to you. No. It just, that's the decision they made. But, and, and what's, I, I mean, I know they're all going to sell out. There's not many. They're going to sell out really fast. They have the 6R15 movement, so good solid movement in them. Americans love limited edition pieces. And Americans love limited editions. We fall for them hook, line, and sinker. So, what's the case size on it? 39 and a half. It's a good size. Good size case. I think it's pretty thin. See, a cream color would be great for any gender. Well, I think the blue is good for any gender. It just, to me, it doesn't say Alpinist. It doesn't say Seiko Alpinist. But it me. definitely seems more masculine than the green and the cream. Blue is. I would say so, yeah, because it gets more tool watch and less dressy. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I think it tends to move more to the masculine side, I would say. I would agree with that. So maybe that's what they're trying to do is change the perception of the Alpinist in general? It could be. I don't know. See, don't know. folks, this is what we talk about on the couch in the morning. So we thought, let's talk yeah. about this today. <laughs> yeah. We get really so. dorky and geeky. It's fun. So you also wanted to talk about, oh, oh. I, that's awesome. The the size of the, yeah. I, I, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you're inter- <laughs> you're Sorry. <laughs> I'm like looking really through all your notes. really popping my balloons here. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking through all your notes. <laughs> so you and I last podcast talked about what we'd like to see come out of big brands for either Basel or some of the new shows that were coming out. And what I had said was I'd love to see Rolex come out with a smaller Submariner, not the, not the, not like the a old, 38 or... not the pre maxi case, but the, but really like a truly smaller, like 37 or 38. Yeah. That's noticeably, you know, more like an Explorer one size of the old days. A little easier 39 for women to or 30, wear. Yeah. 37. Wrists, yeah. And then I think like a day or two after we recorded, yes, the the story came out from the. Um, there's a there's a blog that does their, and we won't say the name of the blog, but they do their very good Rolex yeah. Basel predictions every year. And that was one of them. And that right? was a one thirty eight millimeter sub, a thirty eight sub. So I was like, wow. So you just heard so you it know, here first. Folks. I talked about it before. <laughs> before that else. article came out. <laughs> What does that get me? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> get you absolutely. Not even nothing. a plastic trophy. <laughs> I know you don't. Even, not even a plaque. Jeez. So there, there was that one, to. and another thing I'd like to see, and I was thinking about it this morning, is that I've really enjoyed wearing my dressier watches lately at home. I haven't been going out much because of the storm, and we had the flu, and I've been wearing lighter weight watches, and I'd like to see more loom on dress watches, like. The Cocktail Time Ladies has no loom, and I don't mm-hmm. think your Presages have loom. Nope. But the Rolex, my Rolex 31 millimeter does have loom. The models that have the diamonds on them do not. So they make the same watch with and without loom. So, and it doesn't have to be over loomed like big, huge, giant circle triangle in- indices like a diver, but just put a little tiny strip. Yeah. So Something. you can barely see it. Like Dan Henry did, did that on that chronograph. And you wouldn't know there's loom there unless you sh- put a black light on it. Even if it's just on the, on the hands. On the hands. Cause something. Because I'd like to wear it at night. And a lot of I those agree. watches are waterproof. So, you know, you're going to wear them all the time. You could wear them more if it had a little bit of loom. And I'm up all night during the night doing various things, having insomnia, et cetera. So that's one thing I'd like Sucks to see. Old. Yeah, it's all part of it. <laughs> Push through, baby. Push through. So that's one thing I'd like to see is more loom on some of these watches. I agree. Because your glycine yeah. has it. And that's a pretty dressy does. That's I'd a pretty like to see more watch. coatings on it, though, so it lasts longer. But yeah, it's got nice loom. And a lot of people do like loom. Some people are like, whatever, I don't sleep in my watch. I can't. You know, it's uncomfortable for them or whatever. But I always have a watch on unless I'm showering. Yeah, me too. So that was one thing I'd like to see coming up and... um just some of the new stuff that I'm seeing coming out this year, it seems, and I don't know if we talked about this before, but I'm trying to be careful of the words I use because I don't want it to sound derogatory, but the designs and colors seem simpler. They seem uh, more cartoonish, more playful. Yeah. Um, 
less detail, like the new Panerai does not have the sandwich dial for the smaller women's size, which I applaud them for making a smaller size. And I tried them both on in Las Vegas, but they don't all have the sandwich dial, which I think is a really key feature in the Panerai. Yeah, I think some of the Panerai collections, though, have not have traditionally not had a sandwich dial. So I, it depends on the collection, I think. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I, I kind of hear what you're saying. Like the colors? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like baby blue and white and a little bit, some of it is, um, it's not so, I don't want to say it's not classy, but it's definitely super casual. Right. And they're, they're brands that you don't expect that from. So is innovation great or are, is it better to not fix it? Is, you know, don't fix it if it isn't broken kind of a thing. I don't yeah, know. I don't know. But for me, it just seems some of it is super duper playful. So if I'm going to spend eight grand on a watch, do I want it to look super, super casual? Right. I guess it just depends on the watch. That, right. would, that would be my answer. It depends. I mean, that's just my initial thoughts. You, you can spend 10 grand on a dive watch. That's, you know, dive watch is pretty casual. So mm -hmm. it just depends on what you like. And, but I hear you. I hear you. Okay. Well, um, What's next on our long list? This is kind of a cornucopia of topics. Yeah, it is. So there's my size in, uh, information. And then um, I did. I have had a couple people, two, three people, direct message me to ask me about picking out watches. Like We're getting more of that. Yeah, yeah for sure. Which is really, really nice. Very which flattering. we appreciate. It means you guys think we know what we're talking about. So we fooled you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but we do, we do appreciate you uh, trusting our, our input. Yeah. Um, there are some things that are, are crucial to know about watches, like the movements, um, more technical things like that from someone like Ranch Tracer. But well, and about we like the reputation of the brands, we mm -hmm. can kind of help with that kind of stuff for for you folks that are newer, for sure. Yeah, but in general, do you like it? Does it make you happy when you look at it? It's just like anything. If if you like it, you're going to be looking at it all the time. So. You yeah. Know. If you ask us about the looks, what we think about the looks, we can certainly give you our opinion, but that's worth. That's our opinion. That's, yeah. you know, personal. Yeah, it's worth the paper it's written on, right? I mean, at the end of the day, one person may love the look of a watch. Another person may <clears throat> hate the love of the hate the look of a watch. So we can give you our opinion. But what we're going to always tell you is if you like it, buy it. Right. It, it's just like anything. It's like, do you like big giant dogs? Mm -hmm big giant slobbery dogs or yeah. do you like a small petite little poodle or chihuahua yeah it's, it's, uh... <laughs> we we can help with um quality issues we can or questions we can help with questions on movements we can help with all that stuff and like i said we will if you want our opinion we'll give it to you but you know if you like the watch and the brand has a good reputation and the price is right buy it and don't worry about what all the forum junkies are mm -hmm, talking about mm -hmm. i mean it's there's so much opinion out there. It's crazy. And Invicta is the perfect example. Most, there's so much Invicta hate. Right. Everyone just jumps on that bandwagon without knowing anything about the brand. So And something like things like the like the Invicta Diver, the the Submariner homage or the Seiko SKX0709 right, ones. Right. Those are really popular modification watches. People right. get them and mod them and we actually have one on your bench that we're going to try to mod into a sort of Explorer 2. The, yeah, the, the 007. The right, SKX, yeah. So. so that's, I mean, you're not breaking the bank with that kind of um, thing. Some people, it may be a, a squeeze. So you, you want to really be careful before you get it because you are going to have it. And it is harder to sell the lower priced watches. Yeah, I, think. yeah, I mean, there's no there's no reason to sell the lower price. You're not, you're going to lose most you of your money. You won't get anything. So you just want to think about it, be sure. Buy it because you like it, not for re Most watches you don't buy for resale. Right. You buy it because you like it. And And if you need <clears> food, <throat> you buy food. Just like we were talking right. <laughs> to Anthony about, yeah. you know, and, um, so that was one thing I wanted to talk about that I was really grateful yeah. for people asking yep. and hope that we provided some good feedback. But, um, <clears throat> I've been, I've been doing a lot of, uh, fiddling around with bands lately, bands and mm -hmm. scarves. And I talked a whole lot about scarves you on a one, scarf I'm kick. a scarf nut. I'm on a total scarf kick and I don't want to turn our focus away from watches to scarves. But the only reason I talk about it is that. Um, I actually have been putting them, using them as watch bands and 
my good friend Lorraine was talking about how, wow, these would be great, you know, watch bands. And I used to, um, years ago, I used to put one of my dad's old handkerchiefs because uh, they were really tiny. I, I used that on a, a white watch and a different watch I had um, mm-hmm. around the time that you were racing. So about 10 years ago, I was doing right. that. And these little, these little thin scarves, it's kind of like having a NATO but very feminine because I have a, I have a tough time with natos because they don't always fit me well. And it's hard to find one that isn't like striped and looks like a boy's watch. It looks mm-hmm. like you're wearing, you know, it's like a tube sock, you know, mm-hmm. with the stripes on it. <laughs> so I've been playing around a lot with these scarves and having a ton of fun with that. So, um, <clears throat> that's been really fun and you can find them anywhere online. They're cheap, especially like if you, if you don't, if you aren't worried about quality, you can, go with the Amazon and cause they're yeah. going to get, you know, snagged up a little bit, but pretty versatile stuff. And I do have, uh, someone that we have as a follower that we follow EA eight. He makes watch bands. Yep. Big, big friend of the show. He's, I've bought a, a, a strap from him for the Rolex two tone, the, the bluesy and you're having him make you one, right? Yeah. I'm actually, I have the, the old, um, the 1906 half hunter Longine pocket watch that you, got me mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. last year and it's got wire lugs on it because it was made as a wristwatch but it came with a really thin satin ribbon um i don't a, trust it at I'm all a little worried yeah. about it because it's yeah. about 10 millimeters wide mm-hmm. so i actually had a discussion with mr ea8 mm-hmm. over dm on instagram and he's going to try to come up with like a bund strap for me but it's going to have to be pretty thin in the center but um, I'd like to start wearing that more often, but I want something secure. Right. I He's going to, whatever he comes up with is going to be amazing. I mean, he yeah. just does some great work. So I'm really looking forward to what he comes up with on that. And then I also found on um, Esslinger a retro style metal style bracelet for that. And I don't know if it'll work or not, but it was really affordable. And it, it looks like it has the clamp metal ends that fold over yep. mm-hmm. into a U shape around for your, the wire for the welded for the, lugs. Yeah. For yeah. the welded lugs, just like the old Bulova's, yep. like the 1920s, thirties, uh, art deco size. So that'll be interesting too. Cause it's a really neat piece. Esslinger is a good place to go that most people don't think about because it's more it's geared towards tools? watchmakers and yeah. watch repair folks, but they have some stuff that you normally wouldn't be able to find like 10 millimeter bands, right? You can, you can find a lot of different stuff on Esslinger. So, um, definitely re- recommend checking them out. We bought a lot from them. I think they even had some 10 millimeter NATOs, which you can't, Did they really, which you cannot find. Good luck. Yeah. That's a that, NATO those are tough to find under 18 millimeters anywhere. And there's a lot of smaller quartz ladies watches that if you got like a, like Terry's toxic NATOs, those really smooth, yeah. um, yeah. shiny nato's those are actually really like the satiny. you're talking about yeah they look really form. a black one like yeah. that would have been perfect for yeah for mine yeah. in 10 millimeter but that's a really odd diameter be hard <clears> to find so so i'm really looking forward to getting those and putting some pictures of those up on the internet mm-hmm. but um so that's that's all the only new stuff for me except um just kind of as i go through my daily routine if i go into town or mostly to the doctor um I'm noticing people's watches more and I make comments about them and you're more, becoming a wrist warrior. Yeah, yeah, I am. I'm kind of uh, yeah. snoopy. I'm yeah. snooping. Yeah. So a couple, a couple of people I had asked about their watches and they weren't really sure what they were. So they're wearing them and they, and they appeared to be like a citizen or a Seiko eco drive, kind of a quartz look. And uh, one person said, well, I was just told that it was chart. It charges by the movement of my body and, and I don't ever have to put a battery in it or, or, or maintain it for the rest of my life. And I said, Oh, can I take a look? And it was a citizen eco drive, which is light and, powered, which is light, which is awesome. And I have one, mm-hmm. a lot of people have them and they're great watches, but I said, no, actually that that's not a, um, a mechanical, you know, an automatic watch. And I was wearing a watch with an exhibition back and I popped it off and I said, see that rotor. I said, that's actually, that's what powers the automatic watch. And he just, his, his, their eyes just kind of popped open. Well, that's cool. You educated yeah, someone. That's he, w- awesome. he was really surprised to see that that's how it worked. So yeah. it was cool. So he said, wow. He's like, I didn't know that about watches. He's like, so I've been wearing this watch for 10 years and I had no idea. So it goes to show you that that watch has been 10 years without needing any maintenance, which is really good. That That's a good experience. Unfortunately, I think as watch people, most of us, it's 
it's kind of the opposite. Like you'll, you'll see a, a cool watch or a watch that, you know, on someone's wrist and you're staring at it and you, you're like, should I talk to him? Should I not? You find, you make that decision. You're <laughs> going to reach out to that watch brother or watch sister. Yeah. Right. And then you do. And they're like, and they're like, Oh, is that what it, I don't know. Someone gave it to me. Oh, I don't, it's know. A I, I don't know what it is. And it it's like a fancy <laughs> completely just burst your bubble. I mean, it's like, it's oh. like you spent $25,000 on that watch and you don't even know how it works. Well, it's like you're, you think you're going to make a new watch buddy, a new watch friend. Right. And then they're like, I don't know, whatever. I don't know. Now Someone you're just gave a, it to me. I don't know what it is. Now whatever. you're just a freak. Yeah. Like, you weirdo. Get away from me. <laughs> don't ask me about my watch. <laughs> Assaulting. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> watch assault. Yeah. So no, that's cool. Um, the only other thing we want to talk about before we get into moon phase discussion is just around the show and the content. The timing is a little odd because, and I, I pinged Kaz on this cause I was, I'm a little behind on their show, but I listened to the first 10, 15 minutes of their show this week. And we have a lot going on in life. It's the exact on this same topic that, um, that we were going to talk about. And it's something that you and I have been going back and yeah, forth we've been on lately, for like a month. There lately it's been like daily topic around the sofa and dinner table yeah and there's just there's been an explosion in the last 12 months of of blogs and podcasts not even 12 like just the last few. maybe even like the last six months there's probably been four or five new podcasts that have hit the airwaves just in the last six months and you know since we started this one and we just want to you know we started this because we felt we had something really unique to bring to you guys a husband and wife team there's not a lot of women involved in the hobby we wanted to bring that female voice out and people with smaller wrists well, sure. I, but we wanted to, we thought we were, we really felt we were bringing something unique and we still feel that way. And we hope that we are, we don't want to just be an, just, Oh God, it's just another watch podcast. So we want to make sure we're bringing you guys content that's relevant to the show and to your lives. So the only way we can, we know we're doing that is by you reaching out to us, right? Emailing us at admin at love and com, interacting or re- or with reviewing. us on Instagram, review us, review us on iTunes. That's so important because when people go into iTunes and search for a topic, if your if your po- particular podcast doesn't have any ratings or really only a few and low reviews, whatever, it doesn't even come up. I mean, it's so yeah, it's far like you're down. Not, it's like you don't exist. Yeah. So the only way for us to really grow the show, especially on iTunes, and most of our listeners, I look at the stats. Most of you guys are listening on iTunes. After the show today, just take just like two minutes. Give us a review, a star, you know, you rate one to five on the stars and then you just write out a quick review. What do you think about the show? Good and we, or bad, We yeah. do look at those. There's not many <clears throat> up, but we look at them and, you know, if there's suggestions, we take them and we, we try to incorporate those into the show. But, you know, as we've, we have always told you, this is not a money-making adventure for us. We just love watches. We like talking about them, but it's been an oversaturation in the last, in the last six to eight months and. Even for me, uh, you know, I got behind Two Broke Watch Snobs. I was every Monday, I'd walk, listen to that show, but it just got to be so much and there's so much noise out there. Watches are a big thing right now, even though it's still a pretty small pond in mm-hmm. the grand scheme of, of things. But but you pick, we pick out our favorite podcasts and listen to yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. But we just, we don't want to just be noise to you guys. We want to be bringing something that's entertaining, that's thoughtful, that covers things you guys want to hear. So make sure you're letting us know if, if, are we doing that? Are we not doing that? Are there other things you'd like to hear? Is the theme of, of the show right for your likes, your dislikes? Just let us know. I mean, yeah. that's the only way we can continue to do this and be passionate about it. If we don't hear from you guys, it's hard for us to be motivated to keep bringing the show to you because it takes a lot of time. It costs money, right? We've mm-hmm. got domains yeah. and we've got soundcloud you know subscriptions and we do spend a significant amount of our money to bring you guys this show so let us know you know you have to interact well, with us and, it, and initially this was it was kind of a necessity as a mother of invention sort of thing where i was editing your work your reviews and i and review, i kept saying yeah. well this watch is so big what you know what about a small asian guy or even a woman smaller than my wrists they can't wear even not that asians are the only no, ones no, no, with no, small no. wrists Correct. We, but a, a lot woman of people like, have small wrists like petite gals that i've petite. ridden horses yeah, yeah. with they, i mean their wrists are much smaller than mine and i have a six and a quarter mm-hmm. inch wrist so mm-hmm. depending on your gender or your body type or style i mean some really really tall men men of stature they have smaller wrists too so you know i kind of think we cover a good 
we don't want to cover just one small niche. No, we but we want to we we try to kind of bring in any kind of a budget watch, yep. lo- lower or higher, and any style how it fits your body. You know what women want. We don't want just diamonds. Maybe sometimes men want something a little smaller. And I think we kind of I think we cover that because. I'm sure there's a lot of podcasts out there that they talk about things like football and and wine and beer and different types of social, um, you know, our fun vices that we all right, have. Right. And and that's really fun because some people are really into a lot of those other things and they like a, a, a rounded show. But mm-hmm. um, we, we're kind of trying to stick towards just watches. We're about watches. That's it. And and being being like a watch. Scarves. And scarves. Watches and scarves. <laughs> And generalists. Love, well, you could say scarves. like love and scarves. You could say that about NATO <clears throat> straps or bracelets too. I mean, yeah. this is just one other means of wearing your clothing. Totally. Yeah. So, but, but yeah, listen, I mean, we're, the whole point was to talk about watches, our experience with watches. our experiences, but also to bring in another voice that is not heard much at all. Right. We are, I, as far as I know, and I was looking yesterday, as far as I know, we are the only podcast that has a regular female host there's no one else that's doing that and that's really what we felt we were bringing to the table um i'm just another dude talking watches you know i'm not very exciting but, but... you're good with the technical side of it you really are and you're good about staying well, on geek. topic i'm a mm-hmm. geek i like all the tech stuff but you know at the end of the day it's about a husband and wife talking about watches and and bringing you guys um what we hope is relevant content and yeah we don't focus on the low end, we don't focus on the high end. We just talk about whatever is right. out there, right? And we our collection reflects that. We have $20 Casios, and then we have Rolex, and we have a Cartier, and some other more high-end brands. But we like all of it, and that's what we want the show to reflect, is that don't let people tell you just because your watch is $20, it's, it's a junk watch. That's right. ridiculous. I mean, we like all kinds of different watches. We don't buy watches for status. We buy watches because we appreciate the the value of the brand or the look or the quality or the history Mm -hmm. or all of the above. Right. We just, for for example, this is pretty fast. I have an Invicta all ceramic white, uh, chronograph that your S one, the S one sporty rally thing, right? S one rally. And I, at one time I really wanted a white, uh, ceramic watch. And the only thing that was out there was like Chanel, their $10,000 and their quartzes. So Mm -hmm. I thought, Hmm. Uh, so I found this, nifty little Invicta. I think I paid under a hundred, maybe 90. So the other day I was wearing it in the snow when we had our little snowstorm. Perfect for the snow. Yeah. So I'm wearing it. I think I put pictures on Instagram and then I was looking at it when I was setting it and the, the chronograph secondhand was not on the 12 o'clock. It wasn't zeroed. It wasn't zero. I mean, it was literally the minute hand wasn't either. They were on like twenty on like twenty nine, not even After just you'd off. Reset them, yeah, yeah, it was yeah. way way off, and I'm like, oh, it's broke. <laughs> my I, my cheap my, Invicta's broken. And I'm thinking, oh, did I get what I paid for? Or and and am I am I like totally defending Invicta now? My Invicta, <laughs> you're busted. Yeah. <laughs> so I told you, but I go, honey, my Invicta broke. And you said, oh, you can you can probably it's a reset that. You, you just can. Reset um, them. He looked it up and boop, boop, you hold down some things. Everything lines up. It's good as new. So yeah. I'm yeah. so happy that I didn't lose faith. Don't, don't <laughs> lose the faith, sister. So he uh, he fixed it for me. So it's it's perfectly fine. I'm sure the battery probably needs to be replaced now, but after holding it down for 10 minutes, but <laughs> but it's good as new. It's perfectly fine. And it's a great watch and I love it. So yeah. And it was like 60 or 70 bucks. Right? Yeah. Well, it might've been a little more yeah. with the, and it's got a double deployant butterfly but it's, it's exactly really nice what watch. you were looking for at it's the time. exactly what i was looking for um because i was yearning for something with the ceramic band but right. just goes to show you just because something doesn't look right you got to investigate it further because there's probably a way to look at the owner manual online or if you yeah. still got it and see about resetting these because they're they've got a computer chip they're a lot smarter than we are yeah, if you have a quartz chronograph and the, the chronograph hands are not resetting to the zero position, you can reset them. Just look at your instruction manual. It's usually like you pull the crown out all the way and then you, you hit the, the chronograph One of the pushers, and, yeah. You know, and they reset. But yeah, that's that doesn't mean it's broken. So don't think you're, right. your chronograph so that was, broken. So that, those are the kind of things I, I kind of want to bring to the show are yeah. things that happen in daily life that if this happens to you, this is what we did. So that's that. And 
Are we running out of time here? Don't no, you have to be somewhere? Are we good? I do, but we're still good. And this is you. This is all you. You've done a ton of research on moon phase, Gosh, and we I have. Want, you want I to talk about? I haven't really from. constructed a, a formal speech about it, though. That's all right. I mean, but, what'd um, you, tell us what you learned. Where where did it come from? Where did it start? Why do we have a moon phase? There isn't really one single source of how a moon phase watch came about and yeah. what it does. There, right. Like you can't go to Wikipedia, which I, I love Wikipedia. Right. Um, totally support them. Their data is usually true. But I found in um, some various uh, publications yep. that have talked about different things. And I'm not really... It, this isn't really all from one thing. I'm kind of jumping around multiple here. Multiple. And I'm kind of yeah. gathering from it things that I think are pertinent mm -hmm. and basic. But the moon phase was basically the first way for people to tell time, like the passing of the months. Right. Look, by looking As at the moon. they watch the moon. Yeah. And it traces back to second century BC. So that means the complication, the moon phase complication predates the birth of of the modern clock by more than 1700 years. Wow. That's so that's, amazing. that's kind of a lot. So, um, the first evidence of the complication, uh, it was integrated into modern clock It integrated into modern clocks was in astronomical clocks that were built into churches and ca cathedrals during the Renaissance. So these clocks depicted that the belief was that earth was at the center Remember right. that? Yeah. And the sun and moon and planets orbited around it. So as they discovered that the earth was not the center of the universe, mm -hmm. um, these clocks weren't really they kind of around anymore. But they the moon phase didn't go away. Correct. And that's still how Correct. we know, right? That's yeah, how we... yeah. So the 16th century brought back the use of the, the moon phase complication in standalone clocks. So most people, you know, in... Like we had a grandfather clock in our house and, and it had a moon and phase. it had a moon phase and it always fascinated me. Like, how do you set that? Right. And, um, they were built in Germany and England and they eventually became smaller. So they were incorporated into pocket watches and by the 20th century into wristwatches. So at this point, you didn't really need it though, right? No, Cause at that point at they figured point, out all the gearing for yeah, time. It, and it wasn't a necessary means to, to keep time, but it's, but it was a really charming fascinating complication that I think I think it's one of the most popular and charming complications there are and it actually became a key part in developing the perpetual calendar based mm. on gearing mm -hmm. so so as for gearing let's see I have little notes here um, behind the dial of a typical moon phase watch is a disc with two moons on it and that disc rotates one cycle every 29 and a half days so as the moon waxes and wanes it disappears behind the um there's the horizon yeah there's the like two little half. humps on the horizon yeah. so that moon disc is driven by a gear that has 59 teeth and it's advanced one notch by a mechanical finger every 24 hours so that corresponds to one full rotation for the entire lunar cycle, almost, because in reality, the moon doesn't operate exactly like that. The true lunar lunar cycle is 29 days, 12 hours, and 44 minutes, uh, Okay. or 29.53 days. So Interesting. So it's off so a little bit. So the accuracy is off by 0 0.03 days per month. So how do you fix that? So that means... The entire moon phase cycle will be off by one full day every two years, seven and a half months. So to overcome that discrepancy, a more sophisticated mechanism was developed that incorporates a 135 tooth gear to drive the moon disc. So this improvement increased the accuracy of the movement so that the moon phase complication will only be off by a day once every 122 years. And I think that's what you see in most moon phases now is that larger gear, right? The, uh, the higher tooth. It's the less accurate, I believe, in modern. So you do oh, have to adjust your moon phase a little bit yourself. And then, so there's actually more accurate than that that go off, that go um, into, here I have it in my notes here, like a million yeah, these years. These are amazing <laughs> notes. Yeah, so they're, 
Oh my gosh, I can't. You have it something now. that says some of them, like Paddock, has some moon phases that are over a thousand years of accuracy. I mean, yes, that's crazy. Yeah, I can't that's find it nuts. in my own notes, but um, that is really amazing. And Mosier, Longa, wow. Oh, yeah. oh, even Oaks and Junior. Where are you seeing that in my notes? In the light blue coloring on uh, page five, you talk about Oaks and Junior. Oh, oh here okay. comes their Okay, here it is. Here it is. 3,500 years. Yeah, small, so the smaller specialized brands have gone even further. So they probably have some one-offs and things that are, yeah. One is um, wow. accurate for 11,000 years. Swiss watchmaker Andreas Strahler enveloped a moon phase that's accurate for over 2 million years. So which has when, to be pretty expensive. When they <laughs> bury the person that owns that watch and they put the watch on a winder that has like an atomic power source... When they dig that person up in two million years, the moon It'll phase still is still on accurate. time. That's some quality right there. I'm <laughs> telling you. I mean, you know, 122 years. Come on, that means my grandkid might have to reset it. That's ridiculous. Come on, let's get a little more. I'll accurate. have to, I'll have to verify which one mine is. I'm I'm pretty sure mine is the one that's accurate about three years, because it's. I would imagine watch, the glycine. That's what. Yeah, that is, my but. watch is everything is adjustable on the crown, which before it used to have to send your watch into a watchmaker to adjust your moon face, but now everything's done on, on the, the crown. modern watches on yeah. the crown. So the 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 wearer, the person enjoying it, can adjust it. So I'm total. I'm really uh, curious now. I'm going to look up the glycine and see if it okay. says. Uh, so, so keep going on your history. Ah, oh, okay. So interestingly enough, our moons all have names for them, modern names, and there's many different uh, sets of names, like the native tribes in America had their own names, the Chinese have their own names, we have our own names in the continental US, so it's kind of neat, and the Farmer's Almanac lists lists them. We used to take the almanac, and it's actually pretty cool. So We actually still do, don't we? Uh, oh no, we don't. I haven't, Reader's I haven't bought one in a yeah. while. Yeah, I'm, Reader's <laughs> I'm old fashioned. I drink out of mason jars. So, <laughs> so our next full moon is on March 20th, and it's called the Worm Moon, W O R M, and all the names correspond to different things that have happened. Like, um, for example, the September 14th moon this year will be called the Harvest Moon, and that's normally when people harvest their row crops. And then the hunter's moon is the one after that, a month later in October on the 13th. And the reason they call it the hunter's moon is after they harvest during October, um, there's a lot of seeds and sticks and different things left over from the harvest. So a lot of the animals come out and eat the rabbits and the deer, and they come out and eat what's left, you know, what's fallen out of the, uh, the crop on the ground. And then when that moon is light, the hunters can go out and see the animals really well to take aim to hunt. So not only does, you know, it light the way, but having had that, that harvest, there's a food source for all the animals. So things all sort of happen. You know, the names have come up as a result of what happens in our daily activities. So uh, like December 12th is the cold moon. Cause guess what? It's cold. Mm -hmm. Um, January. But only in the Northern Hemisphere. This is Northern Hemisphere, and this is U.S. This is, um, yeah, according to, uh, the dates are according to NASA, but um, a lot of it was New England, European settlers. They sort of came up with these names. And then some of the other uh, cultures, like in, Chi like in China, they have some names called Holiday Moon, January, which I would assume is the Chinese New Year. Mm -hmm. Then you've got budding moon, which could be cherry blossoms, sleepy moon, peony moon, which is flowers in April. It's when wildflowers are blooming, dragon moon, lotus moon, hungry ghost moon. I'm curious about that one. And then you've got your harvest moon, chrysanthemum moon, kindly moon, white moon, and bitter moon. So, so there's no full ghost moon. He's either no. hungry or nothing. There's no He's satisfied never, ghost no, moon. Never satisfied. Yeah. Okay. Well. There's no food coma ghost moon, just hungry. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So that's that. And then you've got things in uh, other hemispheres. So they have their own sets. It's just really interesting. I have to say, I'm. what I will say about Glycine is their website sucks. 
Oh, it's too it's bad. It's terrible. Like you, you go and like I'm looking at the moon phase. There's no data. There, there's no like even paragraph describing the watch. It's just horrible. It, they haven't updated you sure? this site in so long. Sometimes you have to dig a little. No, they just haven't updated it. It's bad. Um, that's that's really been the big thing with glycine. People are not necessarily upset with the watch designs. We just haven't heard anything out of the brand. You know, I've I've emailed the brand. Um, I've emailed Invicta. To, t- to ask about glycine and nobody responds it's like there's just there, it's like almost like there's nobody at glycine anymore mm. like they bought the brand everyone was gone anyway a to- complete aside but yeah i have Side no cl- i have no clue how many gears my moon phase has <laughs> i'll know in two and a half years if it's off and i'll have to yeah. reset it well but... you'll know and you'll know sooner than that but yeah um, yeah so just a couple more things about the moon phase is that as an artist I've noticed that depending on when your moon phase is purchased, the actual drawing of the moon changes over the decades. So like if you look at old, um, early, early moon phase, like 16th and 17th century moon phases, they have like a a cherub-like moon with little chubby cheeks and happy eyes and lips and, you know, very cute, very stylized. Um, 18th and 19th century, it becomes more of a mature man in the moon, um, you know, a little bit simpler. And then more recently, it's very simple or no face. So it started off as having this cute cherub face like the Renaissance and then moved into the man in the moon. And then now, like both of ours, neither have a face. Yeah, they're, they're just plain like discs, just a plain silver. But then you look at like the Omega Speedmaster moon Correct. phase, and that's actually got carved. Yeah, it's people carved, are, and mm-hmm. it's a, I've never been able was... to see it, but supposedly it's got this tiny foot Neil Armstrong footprint mm-hmm. in it. That's just what I was going to say next. Oh, okay. Is that did I just in, spoil your? You have yeah. been the whole time. <laughs> I'm trying to be quiet. <laughs> You're going to get it. <laughs> I'm in trouble, guys. <laughs> so now, in recent years, the represent you know the way that the moon looks is very realistic it's realism so not you don't just have a face like a cartoon you actually have craters um mountains and people are using techniques like carving engraving like the omega that's amazing yeah which brings me to another interesting thing that i was thinking about this morning when i woke up and you and i were talking about that is the dark side of the moon Ah, yes. The vaunted dark side of the moon. Yeah. Is so, it really dark? Is it really the dark side? The, and um, Yes and no. It's dark sometimes, but it's kind of the opposite of what we see. So when we have a new moon, we see the dark. We see a dark side of the moon because the sun's behind it. It's right. shining on the other side. Right. So as the moon revolves around the earth it also turns on its axis which we all learned in grade school so it we will always have the same um the same view the same same view of the same part we always see the same side of the moon from earth is what you're saying right right yeah so that means the sun is always shining on it from like yeah like when you say it's the dark side of the moon it's actually the, the side we don't see Right. So it could be illuminated by the sun. Right. Like when you said the astronauts. Yeah. So when I think when 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 NASA went to the moon, those missions took place, I believe, when the Earth was between the moon and the sun. Right. So when they like an eclipse. Yeah. So when they would well, when when the astronauts would orbit the moon, the half of the moon was shaded. So Mm -hmm. that that's what became known as the dark side of the moon. But when the moon is on the other side of the earth so it's between the earth and the sun that quote unquote dark side is being illuminated by the sun you're just not seeing it right if we had a big mirror out there reflecting the back of the moon you'd be able to see that that side that hemisphere all lit up but you don't see that because the way it goes around i think the earth it it travels around the earth every 27.3 days like you said and it rotates on its axis axis full every every 27 days so we are always seeing the same but it's still the back side of that moon does get lit up we just don't see it so unless it's on the other side of the earth then it would have to be a full eclipse for it to be completely dark all the way around the yeah moon. the the point is every square millimeter of the moon sees the sun once a month 
we just don't see that backside because it's always the same side of the moon facing Earth. So it became known as the dark side of the moon because the astronauts would see it all in dark and shadow, right? Because it wasn't the sun wasn't illuminating it. But it absolutely does illuminate it once a month. It's just on the it's just between Earth and Sun and we don't see it. That's all. So there's really it is dark. It's a bit of a misnomer because there's no dark side of the moon. The whole moon gets lit up every month, but we just don't see half of it. So that's why it became known as the dark side. Which is I think it's interesting. It is interesting, yeah. Yeah. But uh so that's what the dark side means. The dark side. (gasps) The dark side. It's not about Darth Vader. No. We did just watch Rogue One. That was pretty fantastic. Cool. But I think Han Solo was better. <laughs> I had, and, oh, I can't. I had to say it. I didn't want to go there. I didn't want to talk about movies. I had to say we it. We did it. We talked about movies. I had to say it. We hadn't seen any of them, but I just had. We finally Rogue just One saw. Was so cool. But I thought Han Solo was even Solo just was as good. Cool. But, but the trilogy movies, eh, not so much. The uh, Last Jedi, I oh. had a really hard time not I, getting I'm up sorry. and walking One into the kitchen. One of the worst movies I've ever seen. Hands down. And I know terrible. some of you guys loved it, but I, I just, I thought, I think if I had little kids, I, I think I wouldn't want my kids to watch that. I just it was think really it was a the downer. acting was not very good and it was a big marketing campaign. I just. It didn't seem Star yeah. Wars-y to me. It, neither of them did. But I don't Han think Solo, I felt, yeah. Force I'm Awakens, sorry. I didn't think that was that great either. No. You know? But the new ones, the offshoots, like the. Wow. the um, Amazing. Rogue One. Ronnie Howard's. Yeah, Ronnie Han Howard Solo. directed Han Solo. That reminded me of the first original movies I saw in the 70s. Well, and so it does really Rogue did. One because you see all the same uniforms and man, it was yep. so good. And the acting was stellar. And yeah, all right. Really okay. Cool. We're going to stop. I, I just had to, it was, <laughs> it's been welling up. I had to say something. I had to okay. do it. Sorry. Cause we, had we, to do we it. are a watch podcast, so we don't want to. But we're also sci-fi geeks. We love Very Star sci-fi. Trek. We love and we were Star talking Wars. about the moon and we actually talked a little bit about moon phases with the Death Star because the movie <laughs> was about the Death Star and I'm a Trekkie. I've even been to a convention, so you can't take that out of a person. <laughs> no, we're geeks, that's, and that's all we watch, Star Trek. That's all we watch. So that's probably a good way to close down the I think it is. Podcast. We, t- we talked about some fun stuff today. Um, it was neat, you know, researching moon phase and seeing what you came up with. That was really cool, and um, we're both loving our new moon phases, so that will continue um we talked about our contest winner again congrats to, yeah, to matt right good esq job. good job man we're we're totally stoked for you so uh you should be seeing that stuff soon we got to um, post the video of the actual we drawing will do that. um again red bar sacramento oris event april 9th 7 30 at sienna restaurant in roseville that's a big deal i'm excited come on out and join us it's going to be so much fun let us know either dm red bar sac on Instagram, you could DM us on Instagram or mm-hmm. you could email us if you're not on Instagram at admin at love and watches. You know, and we're really only a couple hours away from the greater Bay Area. Yeah. Oh, totally. Like I know a lot of you guys are in the Bay Area that listen to the show and follow us on Instagram. Come on and check it out. You may have been to an Orse event already, like at Topper or something, but come on out and join us. Meet the folks from Sacramento. We've come down to several of the events down there. Um come on up. It's it's gonna be a lot of fun. We can't wait. So Definitely uh, let us know about that and talked about reviewing us. Please take a few minutes. Any of you that are listening on iTunes, just as soon as the show's over, just take a couple minutes. If it's safe. Give us a rating. <laughs> don't want you driving. Yeah, don't drive and do this, guys. <laughs> but give us a rating. Write just a quick review. Let us know what you think about the show. You can DM us and, and tell us what you want to hear about. If there are guests you would love to hear on the show, let us know. We might be able to get in. We might not. We do have some fun guests coming up mm-hmm. uh, next few months. Uh, have I covered it? Follow us on on Instagram at Love and Watches. Make yeah, sure to do tag the re- us. Do the regrams because we're if you get regrams, got you're some in fun it. friends that have neat products and yep. And we want it. We're going to start pushing for really good quality. I mean, at first it was, and not that at not that anything wasn't good quality because we get so many good quality shots that people tag us in, but. We want, you know, we're pushing ourselves to get better with photography. Um, I know some of my stuff is blurry, but I can only do so yeah, much. Yeah, mine is too. But That's so hard. definitely, you know, work on the photography, start tagging us. We want to see those watches. We want to see the cool shots. Um, we're learning a lot from the stuff that is yeah, getting posted too. It's yeah, really fun. We are. And, and I've actually reached out to some of you to ask questions because some of you are just amazing photographers. So, <laughs> um, so well, definitely I know, tag us. Um, Kaz just got some new equipment, right? 
No, Kaz had his for a while. They actually just did a show on photography. Oh, that's right. That's right. But uh, yeah, so definitely tag us. Use the hashtag love and watches. Um, It's the easiest way to get entered into a giveaway. There's just no easier way to do it if you're on Instagram. Um, If you're not on Instagram, don't worry about it. We will have future giveaways where you don't have to be on Instagram. We totally get it. Um, So we're we're starting to think about those for for 2019 because we do want to do some fun giveaways. Um, It's really easy to keep track. We just keep a spreadsheet. We use an automatic number generator. Yeah, it's pretty pretty basic. Um, It's so easy a dog could do it. Yes, a dog could do it. YouTube channel. Check out the YouTube channel. We're still growing it. We just threw some videos up a couple weeks ago. Yeah, we Um, did a review on a Notice watch. Yeah, I'm going to be doing some more video reviews of some watches. I'm going to review this Glycine after I've worn it for a couple weeks. Um, I've got my Bulova Oceanographer, the reissue. We also have the original Oceanographer, which we're waiting to get back from repair. And once we've oh, got our watchmaker that, has the flu, so yeah. he's home this once week. Once we've got that, I'm going to do a review of the two of them. I'm going to show them to you side by side over, over YouTube and have some fun with that. So definitely check out our YouTube channel and subscribe. Oh, I'm out of breath. I think that's it. Should we wrap? Yeah. Let's wrap this 24th edition. Um, as always, listeners, thank you so much. We appreciate each and every one of you. We love that you like to hear us ramble on about watches. Uh, I am Ranch Racer. And I'm Perpetual Girl. And we will see you all for episode 25. 25. All right. Hang loose, everyone. See you later. Bye-bye.